Test, testing, testing. Please sanitize as you come through the door. Please sanitize. Let's follow the protocols for safety.
นึ่งเดี๋ยวพี่ห้าเ
pleasant good afternoon to all of you. And in order, as we celebrate the, the life of the late Lester James Mitchum, thank you for the accomplishment, even before we begin, in Christ's name, amen. Be seated, please. And you have the privilege and opportunity to pay tribute at this time. Good day, church. Good day, church. As this our final goodbyes, this day couldn't be, be no harder. Okay. As this is our final goodbye, this day could not have been the hardest for me. I know you all want me to talk strong and use my emotions. Meditation. 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 <laughs> and take it slow. And take it slow. I know deep in my heart, you left a score. A scar, a scar, a scar. A scar. Grandpa, I love you and miss you. Wish that we were. Wish that we got to do what we wanted. Everybody told me, take it easy. So I listened. The tears fall unconditionally. I'm glad that not we got. What? I'm glad that we get to share the last moment together. I love you, and I will treasure this moment forever. It's kind of hard right now to be up here speaking, but I'm here. Ask, never beg. Ask, ask as most. Ask me first. Ask me first. Ask me first. Yeah, yeah. Don't beg, never beg. Enough respect, Grandpa. Yeah, it's a pure love, me. And G. I say pure love, me, G. Okay. Go ahead, I couldn't, I couldn't be ever ungrateful to you. Um, the, uh, you were determined to get over where you were going to, uh, and I know, I know that I got that from you. I know you were uh, um, patient with me when we were dealing with anything. You always, uh, uh, you always say to me, take your time. Yeah. You always smile when you see me. And, and I will miss you. And I will miss you. I want to travel the end to the earth with you. Now I'm on my own. I will miss you. Just open the gates of, and put and pat on. Yeah. And the pat and the pat we will, we will, we will light up the place. And a pat woman will light up the place. Will just get me hungry when I'm done. Look, I just don't eat something. I and just, I just don't eat something. something yeah. I remember when I first brought Sky to you, and she, and she started barking. She said, but I dog the big boy, and he, 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 he dog don't like me at all. I oh, miss drinking jelly. In the end, in the end we went to see who will belch, and you know, I laugh. Grandpa, I miss you. Now you gone off my life. It would never be the same, but I'm the same person as I was. I know you will tell me 
humble and cool, because God don't stop. Sleep, sleep, sleep. God don't sleep. You know, like ugly. You know, like ugly. Yeah. I'll forgive. I'll forgive, but will not forget. I will ever, ever keep these, these days in my And heart. I will ever keep these days in my heart. Sleep in peace. Grandpa. Sleep in peace, Grandpa. And I, I love you and I miss you, Misha. And I love you and I miss you dearly. A pleasant good afternoon to all. I too rise to give my tribute to the late Lester James Mitchum, better known as Rasta Tashi, or as we would affectionately know him when I was that small, Rasta Brambach. Um, those of us who grew up in Cunningham Village, in my era, uh, the, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, we would know Lester as a no-nonsense no person. Every child in the village of Cunningham and Stony Gut had to learn discipline whenever we come across Lester. He was a serious, serious, serious Rasta man. He no take nonsense. And Lester would sometimes lash us and reach our parent before us. So you know that when we would have reached home, the story Lester would have already told our parents, we would get more leaks. That's the kind of person Lester was. And um, Ben, his brother, may his soul rest in peace, and I were very good friends. So there were times when Ben and I would be doing some things that was not really protocol. Yeah, we, we had to be disciplined. Thanks for the seriousness of Lester. And so to the family who are left to mourn, the daughters, the son, the sisters, the brothers, I want you to know that to be absent from this body is to be present elsewhere. All right? Lester was a man who always believed in Bible. He read his Bible, he talk his Bible, and sometimes even me. Lester want to challenge me and tell me what the Bible say about Jarasta for all right. You know, and I would tell him the true meaning of Jah, the name Jah, is the shortness of Jehovah. So if you're talking about Jehovah, you're talking about me. All right? God, Jehovah is my God. So I want you all to find courage and comfort this afternoon in the passing of your brother. In the dark of the midnight, have I off hid my face while the storms comes about me and there is no hiding place meets the clash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry keep me safe Till the storm passes by. This is a storm. Till the storm passes over. Till the thunder sounds no more. Till the cloud rolls forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thine hand. Oh, keep me safe till the storm 
passes by. Many times Satan whispers, there is no need to try, for there is no end of sorrows, there is no hope by and by, but I know thou art with me, and tomorrow Never darken the sky. Oh, till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the cloud rolls forever from the sky. Well, hold me fast. Till the storm passes by. Now when the long night has ended and the storm comes no more, let me stand in thy presence on that bright and peaceful shore. In the land where the tempest never come, Lord, may I dwell with thee till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over. Till the thunder sound no more, oh, till the cloud rolls forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand, God, in the hollow of your hand, keep me safe. Till the storm passes by, till the storm, till the thunder sounds no more, until the cloud rolls forever from the sky. Keep the family safe Till the storm passes by God bless you Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. On behalf of the management and staff of La Amiga Funeral Home and the family of the late Lester Mitchum, at this time we announce final viewing for the immediate family only. Thank you.
A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. I just want to say thank you all for coming to share in the life of Pops with us. He was a humble man. And I know my daughter, Kabisha. Well, are you going to make me clean up? It's me one thing. I know my daughter Kabisha will miss Pops. Even lately when we pass through the alley, she keeps saying, Mommy, Pops gone. I say, yeah, Kabisha. So where Pops gone? I say, where do you think Pops gone? He gone up in the sky to meet Jesus. I say, good girl. You know, and just from just from being around him when we were smaller, you know, and the funny thing about it is, uh, as Papa Tom say, when any time you do something, he will always quick to go and tell your parents, but it wasn't that case with us. We will go down the alley, and uh, we will coop him, like we will listen out for his uh, motorbike, and we would coop him hide in a certain area. And uh, whenever we think he's passing, we would go and hide and just shout at something, I can't say it. Where he was like, you know, chicken, chicken neck sticking at your owner. So, <laughs> and he will always chase us. But we know he will not go and tell mommy nothing at all at all. So we will always get away with it. It's just the other night we tell him mommy about it, and he was like, she laughed, you know? And as we got bigger, going around all the kids, and it was a joy for him to see them. You know, at such a the time, he would take them out to the shop and buy all kind of things for them. And then mommy will ask, y'all ain't going to see y'all father? Eh? Y'all can't save the money when he gave it, but mommy and, and we spend it, his pops said, come we go. So they ain't had a choice but to go with him and buy sweets. But Lou and Nikki and Shawan, Stan especially, I know, Tamara, Kimali, Jamali, Shanika, Maximiliano, I know they all will miss him. Sunshine, I know you're going to miss pops. But your Saturdays will be no more. Stan and you, along with Kobisha and Yasha, there will be no more. But all we have to do is live with him in our heart and cherish the moment that we spend with him. Everything out his mouth is like, jobless and, and everything safe and milawa, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so we're gonna miss him dearly. Love your pops. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Words can't express what I'm feeling right now. Check. Whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold him, and not another. We brought nothing in this world. And it is certain that we carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, let me know mine end and the number of my days that I may certify how long I have to live. Behold, who has made me, made my days, as it were, a span long, and mine age 
as even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily, every man living is all together vanity. For man walketh in a vain shadow and disquieted himself in vain. He heapeth up riches and cannot tell who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what is my hope? Truly, my hope is even in thee. I want us to turn to our leaflet, song sheet, and we are going to turn to our first hymn. And while I'm here, may, my name is Pastor Carlton Phipps. I want to extend my deepest condolences to family, friends, and loved ones. Death always brings that we will not see him here again. And as I said earlier, whatever life we live determines where we're going to spend eternity. And it's two places. One must be chosen while we are alive, not when we are dead. Either you choose Christ or you choose to live your own life, which is pleasing the devil. And he loves that. And so I want to encourage you at this point to keep your eyes on God, depend on God as one says that you don't know where to turn now. Well, you can truly turn to God. He has the answer for every situation. If you can find someone to turn, turn to the word, the Bible. Everything that you need in life is found in that book. He has in all the answers. And that, of course, would guide you to meet others that are part of the family of God who would indeed encourage you on your pathway. So we turn to the first, our first hymnal. We are without music at this point, but we're going to use our voices, and we, I'm going to, we're going to sing lustily. Pastor Tom would lead us in our singing. Our first hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, year of salvation. Purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Year of salvation, a purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture, no burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercies, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. 
This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. God bless you. You may be seated. We have a scripture reading. Who is to read it? The book of Psalms? Haven't seen any name? Okay, let us all stand and we're going to repeat the 23rd Psalm together. Let us all stand. And there are other scripture reading and I hope then we'll See so what we can do. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you. Done a wonderful job. Be seated, please. Pastor Huggins will come again with our second hymn. Oh, the Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope. A portion of me as long as life and joy. Yeah, when his flesh and heart shall fill and mortal life shall see. When we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we no less there to see. And when we first begun, 
God bless you. Amen. We are looking at the family song. And family, please come and sing your song. Hope you are prepared for it. Yes, just a closer walk with thee. And I hope this afternoon it will not only be a song. The time has come when people must walk close with God. Amen. Forget 
Let it not only be a song, let it be a reality. And we're having a wake-up call with this COVID-19 that need to really help us to examine ourselves and see what we need to do. We will now have the eulogy. On the 11th day of September in the year 1953, Lester James Mitchum was born to Miss Ruby Mitchum and Mr. Ben Francis. Mm -hmm. He was the sixth of his mother's, no, he was the first of the six of his mother's children. He was the first. Then he would have had Glendora, Lloyd, Kylo, Ben, my friend, and Nutricia, Nutris, as I would norm normally say. Tashi was born right here in Keon, Cunningham Village, where he lived all his years. He grew up right here in Keon, and when he would have reached to an age where he could have worked, he seek employment at one of the estates, I believe it was Cunningham, where he was cutting cane for a little bit. Tashi, as we would call him, had reached to the age where he considered himself a man and pursued himself a girlfriend, where his very firstborn, Patrick, now deceased, was born to him. Then he fell in love with a wonderful woman from the village of Cunningham. And in that union, Tashi bore two marvelous children, Lou and Nikki. And then he went on and had another one by the name of Sharon. Not Sh Shewan, not with fun. This one was outside. <laughs> but you know what? All of Fan's children, all, and I spell all with a capital A, grew up knowing Tashi as daddy. They respect him. They love him. Tashi then leave the sugar escape and went on to work at the Windsor University of Medical um, Science, yeah, as a gardener, even to the point of time when he became sick. Tashi was a very easygoing person, and all of us who know Tashi would understand that Tashi was an easygoing person. Very seldom speak only unless you ask him a question or if he really has something to say to you. Tashi was a person who grew up in the village of Cunningham and listen, I mean, Tashi knew no trouble. I was told that while Tashi was growing up, when he was growing up, going to school, there were some guys who would pick fight with Tashi. He was not a fighter. But you know what? Tashi had a cousin by the name, have a cousin by the name of Gwen. Anybody know Gwen? Miss Pennies? But Miss Pennies was the fighter for Tashi. Tashi only had to come and say, Cousin Gwen, he hit me. And whoever the culprit is, listen, licks. 
And you know what? This motivated Tashi to join the karate class where he practiced taekwondo. I think also he practiced shukakan, this kind of God know what it be. <laughs> and um, he became very good at it. As a small boy, I used to left Cunningham and go over to Washgut where Tashi, Babu, Ragzi, you know, they used to gather over there and they would practice their karate and boy, I learned a little bit by just watching them. Tashi became very good at it to the point where he eventually starts his very own karate class. Not only he was a karate man, but Tashi became a rasta man very early in his life. And I must tell you this one thing. I have seen a lot of guys with locks on their head and they call themselves rasta men. But guess what? Looking at some of them behavior and attitude, I'll tell you this much, I don't know if I could call him that. But Tashi was a man who believed in what he believed. Tashi was indeed a Rasta man. The very match that Tashi had, sometimes his cousin Gwen would go to him and say, lend me your matchet. And Tashi would ask for what purpose? And she would say, I got a piece of meat here. I really want to chop it up. And Tashi would say, you think this thing pan me head for style? I'm a rasta man. You can't get me much to cut meat. I don't eat meat. And so you can't get my tool to cut no meat. That's the seriousness of the man. I'll be honest with you. I have never in my life seen Tashi with a weed in his mouth in the public. I have never seen him done it. As far as Tashi is concerned, whatever he do, he do it all in the privacy of himself. Tashi spent a couple of months or uh, weeks so, um, in the hospital. And there was a time in the hospital while he was there, the nurse brought him some soup. And guess what? The soup was chicken soup. <laughs> so when the nurse brought Tashi the soup and she opened the little bowl, take the cover off the little bowl and Tashi look in it, the first thing that Tashi saw was some pieces of chicken. So Tashi asked the woman, the nurse, what is this all about? The woman said, I brought you some food. So she said, well, look up, up on the head. You can't see. These things on my head are not here for style. I'm a raster man. Down to the very core. And I don't dress up. The lady decided, okay, I'm going to take back the soup. So she went back with the soup. But what she did, she took out the chicken and she brought back the soup. <laughs> When she brought back the soup, Tashi said to the nurse, what's the difference? Anyway, the soup done boil and the chicken done boil in the soup. So I don't need the soup anyway. I'll eat what my sister bring. Whatever my sister bring for me, I'm going to eat it. The nurse said, all right. And from there, Tashi and the nurse develop a good friendship. I was also told that Tashi was a man who used to love mint. Mint, be it hox mint, uh, pepper mint, ginger mint, whatever mint there is, Tashi loved mint. And Tashi used to buy mint by the dollars and save them. But that 
she realized that every time he would go to his mint job, the mint never go. <laughs> so he asked the question to his siblings, Kylo, Lloyd, Mutius, <laughs> uh, Glendora, who eating out me mint? And everybody saying, me no know who. And so one day in his little wisdom, Tashi decided I go find out a who. So Tashi got some pepper, <laughs> bun pepper. And Tashi opened the mint. And Tashi dim, dipped those mint in the pepper. And wrapped them back very carefully and put them back in the jar. One of the brothers decided, he don't know me, so me gonna continue. And he went and he started heading out the mints by the trees and the foes and start eating. To his surprise, <laughs> when he began up, I mean eating the mint, he had to cry out because it was too much better. <laughs> so, so Tashi said, Oh Lord, are you? <laughs> Lloyd, are you? I catch you this time though. And then they just had a laugh. They just had a laugh. He caught Lloyd. He was the father of many. Especially, and as um, Aitisha said tonight, this afternoon, he was the father of many children. Tashi loved children. And he used to take children to the supermarket at Saturday afternoons, Friday afternoon, and he would tell them, buy what you want. I mean, take up what you want. And some of the children would take up a handful of stuff. And Tashi would say, hey, 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 leave some till the next day. You can't go with all today. Leave some till the next day. And that was Tashi. He just loved children. And it so happened that one day, Tashi took ill, really ill, never knowing that this would have been the last of Tashi. Another thing about Tashi before I, I, I tell you something about his death, Tashi loved Peter Tash, Jimmy Cliff. He loved their music. But his favorite music was Lucky Doobie. He loved them. He loved them. He loved them. He had more cities than John could reach, read about. On his birthday, Gwen went up by him, and he had Lucky Doobie playing. He said, Penny girl, I'm enjoying myself. Ja, I'm giving Ja Ja the praise. You know what I like about Tashi? When the Rastafarian going around telling you about Hail Selassie Rastafari, he never ever tell a soul about Selassie. He always say, Ja, Rastafari. He believe in Ja. And when I would ask him, he would say, listen, Ja is the short form of Jehovah. That's what I love about him. And he said, listen, I read my Bible. I study my Bible. I don't know if he had given his heart to the Lord. That is between him and God. All right? In the day that Tashi died, his Bible was found right beside him. Right beside him. It was said that during that night, apparently, he felt uneasy. And he went to his restroom. He never made it out of his restroom. Tashi departed this life on the 7th of February, 2021. We would like to acknowledge his friends, Bra. 
Babu. Lastagan. And his cousin and a good friend of his, Wes, Rasta Wes. We thank all our well wishes. We thank his friends and our supporters who stand by our side, who inquired about him, his neighbors who were concerned. We thank all of you in Jesus' name. The sister of Tashi would also like to give a special thanks to her co-workers, Tasha, Sashi, Joan, for their marvelous support during her time of bereavement. And I would like to say to the sister as well, you are not alone. Mutuals forever, I will have you in my prayer that God continue to give you the guidance and the comfort that is needed as you sojourn in life. To all the families, the daughter, my good friend Lou, who is yet there in St. Martin, who no doubt would have liked to be here, but because of the pandemic, I would like to say to you, Lou, that God have your back. And he have you covered. May the soul of Lester James Mitchum, better known as Brambach Rasta Tashi, rest in eternal peace. God bless you. Amen. We Turn to our song sheets again. You have listened to that eulogy, and we believe that you'll pick out those things that be probably that you remember, something that was not done and what needs to be done. And so that is left between you and what you've heard. So we'll turn to him, uh, our song sheet, and we will sing Victory in Jesus. Let us all stand, please. I heard an old, old story How our Savior came from, from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning How his precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sins and won the victory oh victory in jesus oh my savior forever he sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood he loved me To victory he need the cleansing flood. Before we continue the song, we would like to have two volunteers to come and we will have an offering collected, please. Harris? <laughs> <laughs> I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, yeah, Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. 
But uh, somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He planted me to victory beneath the cleansing of blood. I heard about a man shop he had built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some the sweet day I sing up there.
We also ask that your blessing be upon those who may not have had this afternoon to give. May you continue to provide for them so that the eternal God that in another time they will be able to give to your, to your work. Father, take this offering, use it to your glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Receive the please. We will now have the sermon by Reverend Dr. Benjamin Brown at this time. Church, good afternoon. Uh, you didn't hear me. I said good afternoon. It is so good to have you. So good to have you. And I pray that God will just bless all of us as we continue with this service this afternoon. I want to thank Pastor Storm and Phipps for helping. They're always there to help. And I want to bless God for them both, for their ministry, their contribution. And I pray that God will continue to so bless them that they will keep on being a source of blessing to others. There's one verse of scripture which I would like us to read at this time. It is taken from Hebrews chapter 27. I beg your pardon, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And this is what it says. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, it is the judgment. Let us pray. Holy Father, we thank you for this moment when we can pause to hear, thus saith the Lord. And gracious God, we pray that even in this hour, your Holy Spirit will take control of this word and minister to somebody's heart so that in the final analysis, it will be a blessing to some soul and thereby bring you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. With that verse of scripture in our minds this afternoon, I want to speak to you on the subject. Death is a serious thing. Death is a serious thing. My friends, we all assembled here to pay our final respects to someone whom we all knew and loved. And so to his family members, his father, Ben Francis, his siblings, his relatives, his children, his co-workers, his neighbors, all who are left to mourn his loss, I offer you condolences. Condolences on behalf of my family because Lester was our neighbor for a very long time. And so on behalf of my family, on behalf of the fellowship of the Caon Church of God, and even on my own behalf, I offer you my condolences. And it is my prayer that God will so bless you with his grace, grace that will strengthen, grace that will comfort, grace that will help you in this hour to pick up the pieces and move on with your life. Having said that, I want to draw your attention for a few moments to a passage of scripture which we have just read and which we are using as our text. The writer of the book of Hebrews 
is addressing a group of Hebrew or Jewish Christians. These people, these Christians, these believers were believed to be scattered in places like Asia Minor, Palestine, Egypt, Italy, and even in Greece. These Christians who were scattered in these areas, Hebrew Christians in particular, were facing the possibility of an intensified persecution. As they were confronted with this possibility, there were those who were tempted to abandon their identification with Christ. The writer, the writer of this book, having become aware of this, is inspired by the Holy Spirit to write them. And his purpose in writing them is to provide them with a measure of encouragement. And this is why he says to them, let us hold fast our profession of faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And in chapter 12 of the book of Hebrews, I hear him saying, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. But my friends, in this text, the Hebrew writer is not telling them anything about holding fast. He is not telling them anything about laying aside every weight. But in this text, he is very blunt and he's talking to them about death. He says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. I am sure you will agree with me that in this life, there are many things which, can, which we can do over and over and over again. We can graduate from college as often as we want to. We can be promoted more than once on the job. Some people, because they have become widows and widowers, get married again more than once. You can invest more than once again and again. You can go on a cruise more than once as often as you want it. The point that I'm making is that there are, in, there are those things in this life which we can do more than once. But when it comes to death, my friend, it is only what? Once. Once. It is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the word says, it is the judgment. Amen. There are certain things about death, some significant things about death which I want us to consider in the next few moments. I am going to be sharing three of them with you. And listen attentively, because it concerns all of us who are alive. Because this text is not being addressed to the living. It is being addressed, I beg your pardon, to the dead. <laughs> It is being addressed to the living, yeah. It is appointed unto men once to die. And the first thing about this text, which I would like to suggest to you, is that death is something which shuts you off from all your connections. Death, it shuts you off from all your connections. It shuts you off from your family. It shuts you off from your business. It shuts you off from your possessions. It shuts you off from your friends. It shuts you off from your co-workers, your neighbors. 
It shuts you off from daily activities. Listen, my friend, when you look at it, death is something which shuts you off. Lester, Lester, his remains are still with us. And even if we were to embalm Lester's body, and have him here with us for an indefinite period of time, it will make no difference because he will still be shut off from us. Shut off from us. For this is what death does. It shuts you off. It shuts you off from your pain. It shuts you off from your sufferings. It shuts you off from your troubles. It shuts you off from pleasure. It shuts you off from life. This is what death does. Listen, my friend, as you go through your life on a daily basis, you must do so with the understanding or with the consciousness that you are scheduled to die. Will somebody say an amen? amen? Whether or not we like it, regardless of what we have, regardless of who we are, we are all appointed to die. As young and as strong and as vibrant and as healthy you think you are, you are scheduled. Your name is on the list. For it is appointed unto men once to die. After this, it is the judgment. The second thing about death, which we need to consider, is that it shuttles you over into eternity. When death takes place, instantly you are shuttled into eternity. I remind you this afternoon, my dear friends, that death is not the end of your existence. No, it is not true that when you're dead, you're done. It's not true. When a man dies, his body goes into the grave, but his spirit survives. And when he dies, he's ushered into a place called eternity. And that man, that woman, that boy or girl is in an eternal state. During the time of our Lord's ministry here on earth, parables were used extensively. And Mark and Matthew tell us that without a parable speak he not unto them. Parables are like our sayings. I don't really hear them as often these days, but in years gone by, grandparents, old people, they talk to us with parables. When a mother recognized that her teenage daughter was pregnant. She would say to that teenage daughter, where you catch your coal, go back and spit it. And you can be assured what when those older folk talked with us or talked to us in parables, we got the message. Jesus used parables to convey spiritual messages, spiritual truths. And when you go to the Gospel of Luke, you will find that in chapter 16, he gives us a parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And one of the things which we can grasp from this parable is that Jesus was teaching us that from the moment you die, you are shuttled into eternity. The rich man died, Lazarus died, but they both found themselves in an eternal state and in eternity. Death is a serious thing. And I don't know if in your quiet moments you think about the fact that one day you will die. I don't know if in your quiet moments you think about the fact that when you are die, what happens where you go? You go straight to eternity. Straight into eternity, my friend. After living sumptuously, eating well, spending well, enjoying his wealth, he died. And the poor man Lazarus, who was covered with sores, and whose sores the rich man's dogs probably licked. 
He died. Rich people die, poor people die. We all die. And when we die, my friends, we are ushered straight into eternity. No coming back. This is what happened to Lester. His remains are here with us today. But his spirit has already been ushered into an eternal state. It is appointed unto man once to die. Death is a serious thing. And whether or not we like it, it's going to happen to us. And when that moment comes, we've got to face it. The Calypsonian, I think, is from Nevisi. When your time come. Finish it now. Bob, well, you don't listen to Calypsos? In church, you can still say it. When your time come, it come. The story is told of this rich man who was afraid of death. Afraid of death, afraid of death. This particular night, he really thought that he was going to die. So what he did, he told his maid, you come and sleep in my room, in my bed. And let me go and sleep in your room, in your bed. So they made a switch. She went and slept in his bed. And he went and slept in her bed. Why? He went and slept in the maid's bed because as far as he was concerned, if death came that night, death was not going to find him in his bedroom or in his bed. Death was going to find the maid instead. But guess what happened? Death left where the maid was and went right where he was and found him. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. You can't ignore it. It is a re reality. And I hope that as we go through life on a daily basis, we must give some concern to this thing because it's a true thing when you're dead. It's a judgment that follows. And the second thing which I want, I beg your pardon, the last thing which I want to leave with you this afternoon about death. We're talking about death. And that death is a serious thing. And the third thing, the final thing, which I leave with you, is that death, whenever it takes place, it sets you up for the judgment. Whenever death takes place, it sets you up for the judgment. You can sit there and listen to me. And you can dismiss what I am saying. You can sit there and ignore what I am saying. You can give no thought to what you have heard. And you can go on with your life as usual. It will not change the fact that when you die, it sets you up for the judgment. Because the Bible is telling us in this very passage, which we are using it as our text, after death, it is the judgment. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, we are told that God hath appointed a day in which to judge the world. That day has already been set, the day for the judgment. The judgment, my friend, is a time when all nations will be gathered before the great judge of all the earth. You know, the Bible says, every eye shall see him how very true this is. At the judgment, every eye shall see him. And before him shall be gathered all nations when the master himself will pronounce the verdict on every life. Listen to what the master himself has said in connection with the judgment. I read for you. He says, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Listen very carefully. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Ladies and gentlemen, when you breathe your last breath, when that moment comes and your body releases its spirit and you die, 
After that, my friend, you are set up for the judgment. Death sets you up for the judgment. And at the judgment, there are two main words which you will hear. Come and depart. Some people at the judgment day will hear, come. Some people on the judgment day will hear, depart. Come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Some people will hear, come. At the same time, on the day of judgment, some people will hear, depart. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. If you want to hear the word, come, look at the life you're now living. The life you live, the life you are presently living, is an indication of what you will hear. If your sins have been forgiven, if your iniquities have been pardoned, if God has blotted out your transgression and you have embraced Jesus as your savior and you are living for him, serving him, that's an indication that you are getting ready to hear the word, come. On the other hand, if your transgressions have not yet been blotted out, if your sins have not yet been forgiven, if you're content in doing your own thing and living your own life, you are setting yourself up to hear, depart. Depart from me, ye cursed. We've heard sad words in our lifetime, some very sad words. But I suggest to you this afternoon as I close up this sermon, that the saddest words that mankind will ever hear are the words which will come from the lips of a holy God depart from me into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. John says, I saw the dead small and great stand before God. God, and the books were open and those people whose names were not recorded in the book were cast into the lake of fire which burneth with brimstone forever and ever. Is that the place where you want to end up? For it to push my hand in the oven. That intense heat, my friend, it drives you from the oven. And can you imagine being a human being can you imagine being a, in a state of eternal fire as punishment? That's why Jesus came yes. to save you and to save me. Even though you die, you can hear the words come by embracing Jesus as your Savior. Stand with me. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. And we do this in reverence to Almighty God. The word says, you have an appointment. You have an appointment. You have an appointment with death. It's an appointment you can't change because God has established that date. Like the thief on the cross, even in this service, you can lift your eyes to the hills from whence cometh your help. If you don't want to end up in the eternal fires of hell, the opportunity is given to you to embrace Jesus as your Savior. And so I ask this question, if there's one person in this audience who will humbly say, here's my hand, preacher. I want you to pray for me. I don't want to be lost in the fires of hell. 
I see your hand, take it down, God bless it. I see another hand, God bless, I see your hand. I see your hand, I see your hand, God bless you. I see that hand. Is there another person? Humble enough, God bless you. Is there another one? I see your hand as well. God bless you. We pray in the next 10 seconds. Is there another person? Is there another one who is saying, I see your hand. God bless you. I see your hand. Amen. Let us pray. Those of you in particular who raised your hands as an indication that you want Jesus to forgive you. As an indication that, as an indication that you don't want to die and be shuttled off into hell. Pray this prayer after me. Dear God, I thank you for loving me and for sending Jesus to die for me. I confess my sins. I ask for your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for hearing the prayer of those who prayed this prayer from their hearts. It is not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so we thank you for blotting out people's transgressions even this afternoon and changing and transforming their lives. We bless you for heaven's mercies upon each of them now in Jesus' name. And Father, for the family, the family that is mourning this loss, we lift up all of them before you. Gracious God, comfort them. Help them through this trying period to experience the comfort, the strength, the help that will come from you so that by your grace they will truly move on with their lives as they look to you. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. The blessings of God the Father, the blessings of God the Son, and the blessings of God the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting oh. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, my God, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arm Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day Leaning on the everlasting arm Leaning safe and secure from all alarm Leaning, thank God I'm leaning Everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on the
Man that is born of a woman has but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were shadow and never continues. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins art justly displeased. Yet, O Lord God, most holy, O most holy and merciful Savior, suffer us not for the bitter pains of eternal death to fall from thee. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayers. Spare us, O Lord God, most holy, most mighty Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as he has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right. From henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom do live the spirits of those who depart hence in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful, after they are delivered from the burden of the flesh, are in joy and felicity. We give you hearty thanks for the good examples of all those your servants who having finished their course in faith do not rest from their labors. And we beseech thee that we with all those who are departed in the true faith of thy holy name we have a perfect consummation and bliss both in body and soul in thy eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, in whom whosoever believeth shall live, though he die, and whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall not die eternally, who also hath taught us by his holy apostle St. Paul not to be sorry as men without hope for those who sleep in him. We humbly beseech thee, O Father, to raise us from the death of sin unto the life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we may have a perfect consummation and bliss in the last day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, when he says to us, Come ye blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, we beseech thee, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. All right, our first graveside hymn would be When We All Get to Heaven, What a Day of Rejoicing that will be and indeed for those of us who truly believe that once we have given our heart to the Lord he is going to take us to a place that would be a better place and that is in heaven when we all get to heaven 
Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Mercies and His grace in the mansion of bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all, when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, cloud will overspread the sky. But when the traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we will sing, shout a victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toll of life repay. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we will sing, shout a victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the street of gold. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we will sing, shout a victory while we walk. While we walk a pilgrim pathway, cloud will overspread the sky. But when the traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we will sing, shout a victory, let us then, let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory, toll of life we pay. Oh, when we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout a victory. On what to the prize before us, soon His beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the street of gold. Oh, when we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory, the victory. And that is so true. It is a place where we will forever shouting victory. We will say like the great Martin Luther Jr. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Our next song will be Father Along, we'll know all about it. Tempted and tried, of me to wonder, while it should be the storm the day long, while there are others living about us, never molested, though in the wrong. Father, our Lord, 
know all about it. Father alone will order the sad wine. Cheer up my brothers, living the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall be that bright mansion, he'll understand it all by and by. Father alone will know all about it. Father alone will understand why. Cheer up my sisters, live in the sunshine, we'll understand it all by and by. Faithful till death, said our loving master, a few more days to labor and wait to love the road well that seems as nothing as we sweep through the beautiful gate Father alone will know all about it Father alone Understand why? Cheer up, my sisters, living the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Sing again, Father. Father alone will know all about it. Understand why? Cheer up, my brothers, living the sunshine. We understand it all by and by. Father alone will know all about it. Father alone will understand why. Cheer up, my brothers, leaving the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Often when death has taken our loved one, leaving our home so lonely and dread, then do we wonder why others prosper, living so wicked year after year. Father alone will know all about it. Father alone will understand why. Tear up my brothers, living the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Soon we will see all their loving Savior. Hear the last trumpet of 
down through the sky, then we shall meet those gone on before us, then we shall know and understand why. Cheer up my bro, living the sun. We'll understand it all by and by. Hallelujah. You see, in this life, we don't understand a lot of things. Sometimes we ask the question, why uh, our loved one, why such a nice person? But you see, brethren, God knows best. And until then, we will understand it when he tell us all about it. The songwriter, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. Be 
First of all, um, we have now reached to the point where we would be laying wheat and so the family, the immediate family of the deceased, they now come and lay their wheat. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Hallelujah. And then one day... Oh, I'm so Is there anyone else with the with the read? You, okay, you can now come and lay your read. I know he lives. Give me one, 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 one piece. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He take it away. He is the potter, and I am the clay. When I view the last sunset and cross over the seas, I know a sunlight will be waiting for me. Oh, what a sunrise, God, it's glory. And the storm cloud rolled away. I'll hear the sense of the ages singing on at home coming day. And time will come for the last goodbye. But here's a in the eye death will take off but only to sleep in the arms of our Savior so sweet oh what a sunrise God is 
the flying of the birds where we're going to sing this song some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away to a home where joy shall never end I'll fly away One more time, we convey our condolences to the family members. And you can be assured that they're those people who are going to be remembering you all in prayer. That God will see you through. And remember, remember, remember. The psalmist says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help. Your help will come from the Lord. God bless you all.